Welcome everyone to our week six football officials educational video series where we look at plays to learn from and improve our mechanics for the 2024 season. Thank you everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch the videos and also thank you for the those of you that hit the like button and comment. Before we get into week six uh, plays, I would just like to take a moment and let's keep those communities in our thoughts and prayers that were impacted recently by Hurricane Helene and the devastation it has caused. Those communities will have a long road to recovery. So we want to keep them in our thoughts and prayers uh, as they have been significantly impacted by that storm. Thank you very much. Now let's get into our week six plays. First play, we're going to talk about uh, rule of illegal motion, and specifically Rule 7-3, Article 7. So on this play here, we're going to focus on the player I've highlighted inside the circle, number 14. But as we look at this formation, we're going to see, as I have indicated by the four arrows, that we already have four players in the backfield, which a team cannot have more than four. So number 14 would be ruled on the line of scrimmage to make this a legal formation. And obviously, you can see that he is on the line of scrimmage. But you're going to notice here as we run through the play, we're going to see number 14 go in motion down the line of scrimmage, being a player on the line of scrimmage, and the ball snap. This would be a foul at the snap for illegal motion. Number 14 cannot, by rule, be in motion down the line of scrimmage. Now, number 14 can, being on the line of scrimmage, move, but he must reset for by the rule book definition, a full second. As you can see clearly here, number 14 does not come to be set for a full second. So this, we should have a penalty marker down for illegal motion at the snap on number 14 because he was in motion at the snap being on the line of scrimmage. If he would have moved and come set, then we would not have a foul. So what makes it a foul is in being in motion on the line of scrimmage at the snap. We're going to pick up the play right after the snap has begun, and we're going to actually look at the players up here at the 40-yard line that I've highlighted in the circle, um, the action between those two. And we can see a lot of hands up near the face mask, helmet area, and then at the end of the play, we see the helmet come off of the player. And so as we go back and kind of zoom in on this play, we can see right here, we need to observe this action. We need to get a marker down if the action is illegal. And in this case, it clearly looks like uh, the player here tore his helmet off. So we want to get a penalty marker down to get that uh, penalty for that player's illegal action. And also, if we don't observe this action, we're sending that player out of the game for losing his helmet. And he could stay in the game if we observe the action and properly penalized it. Our focus will be on penalty enforcement, specifically the spot of that penalty enforcement. And we're going to have a run towards the line judge side of the field. And then we're going to have the line judge drop a penalty marker here on a holding that it looks like it occurs around the 15-yard line. And we're going to see the penalty flag go down around the 11-yard line. So the results of the play a touchdown. So a couple things here. First of all, continue to officiate the play even after you throw your marker. Next up, so it looks like right about here is where the Line judge reaches for his flag. So it looks like the foul is right around the 15-yard line. And then you're going to see him throw the flag, and his flag ends up down around the 11-yard line. So it's important that we get this enforcement spot from where we judge that the foul occurred. So a couple things to remember on plays. One, continue to officiate the play even after you throw your flag all the way out to the end. Next, if you've thrown your flag and you know that your flag did not end up in the proper spot, like in this case, then come back, move your flag to the proper enforcement spot or what you judge to be the proper enforcement spot. So we get proper penalty enforcement. And then finally, go to the referee and report the foul and let the referee know that the flag is at the proper spot. Referees, you should also be asking the official, is the flag in a good spot? Because on this play, we're going to see that we enforce this foul from the 11 yard line and we end up at the 21 yard line after a holding penalty we want to move our flags if needed to get proper penalty enforcement from the spot of the foul so again officiate the play all the way to the end move your flag if necessary report the foul to the referee it will help us to get our enforcements correct and get the proper spot on these plays now one more item regarding this play these yard markers that we have along the sideline prior to the game it is strongly encourage you to move these back to the track area they will get in your way 
it'll cause you to trip potentially. So move them back off to the side for safety so that they don't get in your way. Move them back off of that line prior to the game. Take that extra couple of minutes. Move them back. They'll be out of your way. They get in the chain crew side way also. So move them back out of the way and you'll have less problems. Play is running play towards the line jet side of the field. And we're going to look at the spot of where it looks like the runner goes down at here on this play. And it looks like right about here. Now notice where the front of the first down marker is looks like around the 49 and this player looks like to be down around the 47 yard line approximately so we want to get proper enforcement and we want to give the runner what they earn but we don't want to give them more than they earned and as we're going to see on the final clip on this play is still photo we're going to see that we give the runner the slide you see the stopping of the clock here we give the runner the sliding motion on the ground and then they, we end up giving the runner a first down on this play let's give them what they earned let's make sure that when we judge them to be down that we don't give them additional yardage for a slide and we can see right here we now have a first down he got more yardage than he should have been given on that play next play we're going to talk about mechanics and the specific mechanic we're going to talk about is a mechanic for when we're ruling a backwards pass and that mechanic is is when we observe a play like this and we say it's a backwards pass we want to use the mechanic signal the punch backwards which can be found on page 47 of the mechanics manual this is a communication tool for our, our wing officials to utilize to communicate to the rest of the crew that you as that wing are ruling this pass backwards. We want to make sure that we're utilizing this signal in communicating to our crew so they know that we're ruling the pass backwards. This proper communication will assist the crew as we officiate this play. Play involves a punt where we're going to see the receiving player come into the screen here and run forward and then runs backwards and then gets driven backwards. So where would you mark the proper forward progress spot on this play as a result of the play? Well, as we take a second look at this play, we're gonna see that our back judge and our line judge do a great job here. The receiver does gain forward progress up to approximately the 41 yard line. Then on his own, he begins to go backwards, giving up ground that he has gained. So that is on his own. But right about here, we can see is where the defensive player or the kicking team starts to wrap up the player and starts to drive him backwards at approximately 46 yard line. So this is a quality spot here in a great vicinity of the forward progress that the player earned or gave up ground. And then when the defensive team or the tackling team started to initiate the tackle, we gave him the yardage that he had earned. This is a good spot here, and we see two officials lined up perfectly on the same yard line, which looks great. Great job. Well, here it's important to know the 35-yard line because that is our line of scrimmage, and that's going to come into play on this play as we're going to have the quarterback get the ball, scramble around to the line judge side of the field, and then throw the ball. And we're going to see number 72 here go downfield and we're going to see him cross the 40 yard line and then he comes back. Now, once he's downfield, he's downfield ineligible. But on this play, the wing officials need to have good positioning to be able to rule on things such as was that player downfield farther than two yards because then he's ineligible downfield. Next thing we have to know is did this ball cross the line of scrimmage? And as you can see, I've highlighted the line of scrimmage again here at 35 yard line. So let's make sure especially our wing officials, that we are in good position to rule on these things and are aware of our line of scrimmage so that we can determine whether we have ineligibles downfield and whether the ball has crossed the line of scrimmage. If this pass does not cross the line of scrimmage, then we would not have an ineligible downfield. But if you rule that the ball did cross the line of scrimmage, then you could have a penalty marker down for ineligible downfield. Make sure you're in good position. Make sure you know that important line of scrimmage and keep up the good work on officiating these types of plays. Next play, we're going to see a good job here by a referee who calls a holding on our left tackle who I've highlighted inside the circle. And as we watch this play, we're going to see the defensive player beat him. And you can see the offensive player reach up around his neck and hook him up there. This is a good call. This is staying with your area of responsibility. And anytime you see an offensive lineman get beat by this and, and being in poor position to block that player, you need to look for 
a hold or a potential hold like this. And you can see right here, the defensive player is getting by him. And so that's a lot of times when you see these holds. This is kind of a an indicator that you potentially could have a hold on this play when the defensive lineman beats the offensive player. Good job here on this play. So this play, we're going to look at mechanics, and we're going to focus inside, specifically the headlinesmen on the far side of the field. I've highlighted inside a circle here. And it always looks really good when we have great mechanics on the field. It really looks the crew make good, looks good, and it just makes everything look so crisp and clean. On this play, you can see here the headlinesman comes beyond the first down marker, uh, comes in giving the stop the clock signal, and then we see the umpire and the line judge doing the same thing, echoing that stop the clock signal indicating the clock operator stop the clock we have a first down and this is a good job here the other part about this is the headlines when you notice uh did not look over his shoulder to see the first down marker which you'll you'll see sometimes that just doesn't look good you're taking your eyes off the play and if you know where the first down marker is if you look in advance you'll know where it is and you'll be able to do like this headlinesman did and cross that marker cross the first down stake give the stop the clock signal knowing that you've achieved the yardage to gain to get that first down. And those good crisp clean mechanics just look great on the field. It really makes the crew look good. So keep up your quality mechanics, stay in the mechanics manual, take a look at it and utilize these mechanics and your crew will look better too. Thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to watch this week's video. I hope the information contained in this video was helpful to you and it will help you improve in officiating your games. I want everyone to have a great game this week and keep taking the time out of your schedule to look in your rule book, your mechanics manual and improving every week. Great job. Till next time. Take care.